Hi there, welcome to the uh, PSCAD uh, seminar for uh, the educational users. Uh, my name is Lalin, uh, and there are a few quick uh, colleagues joining with me today for the presentations. Um, Jim Wong and uh, Sobi uh, uh, Jenkins, and also uh, our event coordinators, uh, training coordinator Christian. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, before I start uh, with the uh, presentations and the uh, uh, some other work, uh, so let me give a little bit of introduction to how it goes, this this uh, uh, seminar. Uh, it is for two days, as you know, I mean, the, every day is just a couple of hours. Um, mostly the uh, we are introducing the basic uh, applications, basic usage of PSCAD, um, targeting the, uh, the academic users. So the mainly the uh, the whole seminar will be consist of a few uh, presentations as well as some hands-on um, uh, PSCAD uh, simulations. Um, so if you're having PSCAD, uh, you can uh, join with us and you can develop small cases and run with us. And we are playing. You can play with the same uh, models. Uh, some of the models we use for our uh, I mean, the investigations will be shared with you uh, end of the day today. It's mainly used for tomorrow. Uh, today is just uh, mainly uh, 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 the presentation and some of the PS get using uh, demos only. So from tomorrow, as I said, I mean, if you're interested, I mean, you have PS get, uh, please join with us. You, uh, you can um, develop small circuit or some of the cases we are providing you, you can play with them. Uh, so make sure that uh, you have a couple of screen in that case because uh, honestly you need uh, one screen to uh, see what we are doing and also as well as another screen to uh, have yourself PSK. So uh, with that I would like to I mean the uh, just tell what's going on today itself. So the first half an hour or 45 minutes I will take for an um, a presentation on the especially to give you a little bit background of importance of PSCAD as a power system simulation software, why uh, it is important. Uh, and after that, uh, my colleagues will uh, demonstrate you some of the small uh, simulation case development in PSCAD and, and running the simulation and see the results. So that will give you, if you are really new to the software, I haven't seen before, I haven't touched before, this, that session will be really interesting. Uh, for others who are a little bit uh, used to PSCAD before, I mean, the, the, the small the idea day, we will discuss about a little bit detail about the usage of PSCAD in different areas, including um, a traditional areas like cross machine, induction machines, and as well as the um, renewable areas, which people are talking about, I mean, the integration areas. So that's a high level agenda for our <coughs> couple of days seminar. And uh, I think with that, we can start with the uh, general introduction to the PSCAD. Uh, once come to the PSCAD, <coughs> sorry, uh, the, our company called Mantepa Hydro International, we developed the software uh, PSCAD EMTDC. Uh, there are two words, but uh, our commercial uh, naming is PSCAD as Many of you are aware. Uh, PSCAD is meant for the, uh, the whatever the user interface. Uh, uh, as you see here in my screen, the uh, uh, where you can develop a small circuit as well as you can do some measurements and you can plot the results. So this is the uh, PSCAD N. Uh, what we call E by EMTDC is the old calculation algorithm behind this. So the, when you develop a circuit. <coughs> And you're running the simulation, you know that there's a lot of calculations engaged with that. All the calculation part will be done in the EMTDC. So a combination of the interface as well as the calculation engine of I mean the when you get the, in other words, PSCAD part and EMTDC part together, we call it I mean the commercial it's PSCAD itself. So as you see, I mean the uh, here the the one feature with the PSCAD is you develop your own circuit inside the platform and you can then do some measurements or maybe active or reactive or voltage currents and you can plot them and once you run the software or simulation like this you can see all the these plottings i mean as they develop 
So it's a very interactive software, as you see. You can change it to your circuit <coughs> and read on the simulation and see the difference. Uh, therefore, I mean, this is a lot of uh, interactive, uh, um, I would say, it is very much interactive software. The next point is what kind of applications, especially uh, people are talking about. I mean, I'm giving you like a broad introduction to that. I mean, the, I was somebody who would say limitless, but honestly, the PSK is as long as you develop a circuit, PSK resolve that, right? So that to give you an indication, the application is kind of limitless because you can develop whatever the circuit you want to see, right? It's a uh, maybe high frequency event, low frequency event, uh, anything you want to see, as long as you develop the circuit you want to see, the PSK resolve it and give you the results. So therefore, I mean, it's having, I would say, rather limitless, actually it should be very broad application. <clears throat> so the uh, once come to the I mean the, I, I I think I already explained what is EMTD and PSK. Uh, once come to the common applications when we talk about uh, the, the historically the PSK heavily used for the transient studies. The transient means a little bit high frequency um, transient studies like switching studies, lightning, and also the because of the <clears throat> the unique uh, feature that uh, uh, in PSK that you can uh, actually model the behavior of thyristors and IGBDs accurately. It is also very common in, in HVDC and FAC devices areas. And also, I mean, even recently, it, it is um, very much uh, attractive software to simulate most of the renewable integrations like a wind and PV, especially in low short circuit areas where you have uh, some issues. Um, uh, so, and also it's not a, I mean, the strange thing that people use PSCAD for protection studies, especially not general protection, um, insurance protection coordination kind of studies, but a specific protection scheme developments, especially related to the uh, uh, heavily uh, flooded uh, renewable uh, generation areas. I mean, the, what I'm saying here is because you know that more and more renewables come into the power system, the short circuit level goes down. Sometimes the traditional uh, um, relays, which are based on the, uh, highly rely on the short circuit currents, uh, will may, they may fail or they may have some issues or those kind of special, uh, studies will normally people uh, perform in, in PSK. Other than that, I mean, the <clears throat> as you see here, the uh, maybe harm, some harmonic studies, the, the dynamic response coming from the, uh, the power electronic devices, and uh, especially for, I mean, the small scale distributed energy generation, those areas, I mean, the people do a lot of experiments using PSK. But once come to the, uh, very high level, uh, as my experience, I would say, the PSK is very strong in, in uh, the insulation coordination area, where I say, I mean, the still uh, the most favorite tool used by many of the uh, consultant, and then the renewable integration, including uh, the, uh, especially the HVDC, and especially BHC, uh, and related to the HVDC um, studies. Uh, as I said earlier, <clears throat> uh, the the PSCAD is a software people heavily use for transient studies. Rather than this, let me go to the next slide, which is I think yeah. So this is simple a uh, cat bank energizing uh, simulation. Whereas it's a very simple circuit. You see the uh, the capacitor bank here down, and we have what you call inverse limiting reactor. Normally the capacitor is equipped with this kind of reactor to limit the, uh, the inverse current, and you have the breaker here, and you have a source to represent the power system. <clears throat> and the other side, you see the, uh, the another leg of the capacitor band already energized. So that's why you don't see a breaker, but we are what we are doing is we are operating this breaker, we are closing this breaker, and, um, and try to plot the, the, the bus voltage and the and the current drawn from the 
uh, drawn uh, by the uh, capacitor itself. So the top uh, waveform you see here is the, the voltage waveform. The bottom one is the current, the breaker current or the capacitor current taken by the, the, the capacitor. As you see that before the switch is closed somewhere here, around between, uh, I would say, 0.21 points somewhere here in the middle. So before that, the current is zero. <clears throat> uh, the, the current taken from the, uh, the capacitor bank, and you see the, 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 the nice fan sort of waveform on the bus. And as soon as you switch, you see that uh, there's a distorted waveform uh, here, the voltage waveform. This is what we call transient area. And also, not necessarily voltage, also the current, you see that, I mean, it's operating at a higher frequency compared with the, the steady state low frequency you see the towards the right side, right? So, this transient period <coughs> is the uh, main concern uh, in, in a, for example, uh, for, for a study like capacitor bank switching, this high frequency transient, right, cannot be captured by the, uh, we call other general software, like, I mean, we call RMS based software, where you record only the, um, what I'm talking about, RMS based software means, yeah, their voltage is, if you plot them in, in RMS voltage, like line, right? So the PS can having instantaneous sinusoidal waveform. Right, so the their current the other software like RMS based software the current is again like voltage maybe one per unit again sorry uh, the current may have some value right the RMS values you record with the time where in clear scale with the time is the time axis always the x axis is time. We record the instantaneous values. So we can see all these distortions happen to the, the sinusoidal waveform, whereas, I mean, the, the other RMS based uh, uh, values based uh, softwares, like I'm, I'm referring to like PSAC, PSL, like those kind of softwares, you cannot see the sinusoidal waveform, and therefore you don't capture this kind of transients. So this is one of the very strong application of PSCAD, its ability to, I mean, the regenerate the, uh, the, the high frequency transients. So it's to expand this kind of transients, uh, uh, can, can carry a lot of harmonic uh, distortions, some kind of nonlinear effects here, it means especially if you're energizing a transformer, uh, the, the transfer saturation effect will come into that. So the, that can be, some of you may know that um, the, uh, uh, some of you know that, I mean, the, the saturation is nonlinear. So those all impact. Other, the last one is the frequency dependent effect. Also, yeah, as you know, what is this mean by frequency dependent effect is the, the you know that the, uh, if you take any conductor cross section, if you have a DC, current, it flows through whole the cross-sectional area, right? It's becoming frequency, higher the frequency, it's a natural thing, the, 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 the current conductance will happen more towards the skin. We call, some people call it skin effect, right? So the, uh, so higher the frequency, the, uh, the current mostly flows through the, the outer area of the, uh, the, the conductor, this is the cross-section again. So, the area drastically reduced, it means uh, the uh, effective resistance will be impacted. So the with the different frequencies, right, this resistance, I mean, provided by any of the conductors will be different. So the uh, that will be accounted in EMT software, uh, electromagnetic transient software like PSK, whereas the RMS software, um, this, this is provided mostly in steady state solutions, the, uh, they don't provide uh, the impact of the frequency defendant event. I think I, I already mentioned they can have high frequency uh, mm, uh, I mean distortions and they damped 
very quickly. I mean, they, they die out very quickly. Within a cycle or two, most of these uh, transients are gone out. Then the question is why they are important. Uh, I think before that, yeah, even though these are like very short period, you see the magnitude is significantly high. That may strain your insulation system. So that's why when it's come to the people are talking about high frequency transit, either line switching, transmission line switching studies, cable switching, or lightning or voltage, those can uh, damage your insulation. All right. So well, that's why the poor people insulation coordination studies heavily perform these kind of studies to recognize what should be the largest um, the voltage you can see during this transient events. So how we got this uh, transient again this is a distinguish between the the EMT software uh, you see the right side uh, so we capture everything because we use the differential equations to solve the circuit, <clears throat> whereas the uh, other transient stability software like PSCC or PSLF, they use the algebraic equations. So they have fixed the frequency, whereas the our um, solving uh, our equations are independent from the frequency, so you get whatever the transient you will see there, right? So that's the basic difference between the, uh, the electromagnetic software, EMT software, and the anti-traditional power flow uh, or transit stability software. So the, the, the accuracy here, the presentation is very high compared with here because it's capturing almost true behavior of the, the electrical elements. As a result, you will see like a most likely real life uh, behavior from uh, by solving the circuits. I'm not going to skip uh, some of these uh, slides, uh, but uh, the one thing I want to tell you about the, the high frequency transients, uh, I'm not thinking it's a much of interest of most of you guys as uh, students or academic people. Some of you may be, but uh, you know that mostly you guys are thinking about uh, the renewables and that area. Uh, but once come to the transient world, I mean, the, uh, we are looking at basically three types of high frequency transients: the slow pump transients, which is uh, <coughs> which is uh, uh, mainly people are talking about the transmission line cable switching at that kind of frequencies. Whereas the fast pump is always lightning uh, related studies. Very fast pumps are very unique. Uh, those are special studies done for the gas insulated substations, people call GIS. Uh, so that's where the very fast pumps, very fast pumps. Yes. So the, mainly when we come to the insulation coordination, people are talking about the, the switching over voltages as well as the lightning over voltages, which is a, one of the a very extreme application of the PSCAD. Uh, still, whoever doing insulation coordination, they perform these two studies using PSCAD. <clears throat> now, I mean, I already mentioned, even though this transient, high frequency transient, you see in the voltage, they're for a short period, uh, but they are really impacting, the, they may impact the insulation and there can be insulation failures. And also, I mean, the, based on that, you have to put the protective equipment, like the, the arresters. Um, and even you have the surge arresters, you have to measure the surge arresters capable of doing this. Uh, um, uh, and some other, I mean, meeting options, uh, grading capacitors, uh, inrush reactors, these kind of things you want to size and see how it goes. The, the, the people use these kind of studies uh, as, as, I mean, the ultimately design the or ultimately come with the mitigation or remedies. So how these uh, 
transient resulted. I mean, the, uh, some of you are aware about the theory. Those are mainly resulted by the local, <clears throat> the oscillation between the or interaction between the local LC elements in inductors and capacitors surrounding, right? And also, if you specifically come to the transmission line, there can be traveling waves through the uh, uh, transmission line. You see that if you see some clouds here, it's mostly sinusoidal waves. Sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, you see that I mean, it's very high frequency oscillations like this. If it's mostly sinusoidal waveform, it is basically from the uh, oscillation, LC oscillations, local L inductor and capacitive elements. If it's a traveling wave related, you mostly see like a sawtooth kind of waveform like this. I mean, the, it's very common we see these kind of things through the Baker TRV studies, in other words, called Baker Transient Recovery Voltage Studies. I'm not talking about those studies, but uh, honestly, if you perform one day these kind of studies, you will see clearly the uh, difference between the uh, the traveling wave reflections kind of response and the LC pure inductor and capacitive uh, oscillations like this. Uh, normally, how we trigger this kind of transitions is basically doing some change to your network topology, a sudden change, I would say. Uh, it can be, I mean, the crossing a break, opening a breaker, uh, energizing through that energizing a line or cable or transformer. The fault happens suddenly, I mean, you're introducing a suddenly a zero ground point, or even lightning. I mean, it's also a kind of a huge, introducing a huge fault, a suddenly a source of climate charger. So this kind of transient, as you see, I mean, you already see this kind of transient. This is coming through switching study. This is through a lightning study. Uh, but you have to look at the time scale. Uh, there in a millisecond, I mean, even the microsecond range, I would say. Uh, switching is a little bit a slow event. You have a little bit larger time steps here. But this is just to, I mean, I'm not going to teach you how to do and how to form all of these studies, but to give anyone an idea which which area these are. Uh, <clears throat> this is, I mean, the uh, uh, some of the detail of these kind of studies uh, when you perform specific switching studies. Uh, it is saying, I mean, the uh, depending on the uh, the switching point. Where you close your breaker, the, your transients can be different. Therefore, you have to go to a multiple studies to ensure to get the, the largest transient, right? Because depending on you know that you have sinusoidal waveform, uh, voltage waveform, depending on where you close your breaker, you can close the breaker at zero crossing or here, or here, or here. Depending on those places, there can be different transient responses. Probably the easiest way is just do multiple switching for complete one cycle like this, right? At different different places, and for figure it out through an statistical analysis, what would be the, the largest value? So this this table is providing you that such kind of statistical analysis. This again, I mean the uh, the capacitor bank switching transients. You already seen that voltage and the current uh, having transients. So the if you are heard about the cap bank switching, important is this kind of we call this is inrush current. As you see here, the large current is drawn at the beginning. Then you go to the a little bit right steady state current. Standards have limited this have a, a magnitude. Uh, for, for example, a general purpose breaker having magnitude of this maximum current can draw through a breaker is a 15 kilo ampere, and the oscillation frequency cannot go more than 4.2 kilohertz. So you want to ensure through your studies that this inverse current is not, I mean, breaching this, this standards or standard requirements. So that's that's where this is uh, the simulations are helpful too perform a simulation and, and ensure that uh, your interest currents are within limits. So this is another area, circuit breaker, transient recovery voltage. 
again, if I summarize, I mean, the all these different different studies, lightning study. I'm not going in detail here again, but what I want to go and tell you that <clears throat> these all are very much high frequency transients. Uh, so we need uh, very much uh, detailed calculation to get the information because we are calculating your sinusoidal waveform and the distortions to your sinusoidal waveform like that. So the, the calculation frequency is, I mean, the very high, whereas the others of other RMS case or segmented software, we derive like RMS value. So normally they do maybe few times a cycle, I mean, a few times in the sense, maybe four times, eight times, or 15 times as you choose. Uh, whereas the PS CAD may have uh, so many points, as you see here, the very high frequency events like that, you may have like so many, I mean, the hundreds of hundreds of points on, on science of the waveform to derive these points, all right? So, Therefore, one disadvantage with the PSCAD, because the calculation burden is so high, as you know, so therefore, I mean, the, you cannot represent whole power system, for example, you cannot represent whole North American power system in PSCAD easily. Nowadays, I mean, the, we are getting larger and larger uh, representation in, in PSCAD. I mean, I know that the, now the whole Australian system, for example, has been developed in PSCAD. But again, compared with any any other RMS software, we can easily represent 50,000 bar system, whereas in PSCAD, you cannot do that because of this detailed representation as well as the detailed calculations, it will take um, a long time from the simulation. Hopefully, I mean, my presentation is to give you a clear idea where what is the PSCAD, what the EMT software is doing, compared with the uh, traditional RNA software, why it is important, especially I'm only highlighted here up to now, the importance of the, the this kind of software in high frequency event, because the, the only high frequency software, you know, I mean, high only EMT software can capture the high frequency event. And these are relatively the motors starting these kind of things are we call it low frequency uh, a transient. Somebody can even argue with me why you call transient, but uh, the, the, the distortions. But even those kind of things we can definitely simulate in PSCAD, but not necessarily in PSCAD. You can use any other software to do that too. Uh, these are the dynamic. The, transient stability kind of uh, interaction between the synchronous machine. Honestly, you know that I mean, they are low frequency events. Uh, what you're showing here is that not necessarily that PSCAD is not ideal for that, but if somebody wants to do that, still you can use PSCAD. But normally these kind of studies will be done by, you know, the, the low frequency event you can study easily in PSSC or any other RMS based software. Uh, this is the, I mean, the high level uh, fre frequency spectrum of studies. Uh, there are several studies mentioned here about, I don't want to talk about all of them, but importantly, as you see the lightning and switching, these kind of five studies are in a very small time scale, in other words, very high frequency, right? Whereas the stability, uh, transit stability, those kind of things are a little bit lower here. You see the uh, transit stability hiding behind here. So the importance is here, especially the, the PSCAD essentially used in, in, in the high frequency range, traditional, traditionally, I would say. Uh, nowadays, I know that I mean, rather than these studies, the PSCAD is heavily used for the uh, renewable integration. I will, I will demonstrate in a moment why is that. So the, uh, with that, I mean, the, I just keep this one. I already discussed about this. The, uh, I, I also highlighted that uh, some of these points. I want to really save the time. Uh, yeah, I skipped these few things also. 
Uh, these are a few examples. The, uh, the, la the, the last two things I want to discuss again, I mean, the, uh, here the importance again highlighting that uh, the, the, the basic elements uh, in, in PSCAD environment, uh, like resistor, inductor, and capacitor, we use this differential equation. So compared with the, the other people, you may use algebraic equation. Uh, these are some of the I mean, events, uh, the point on wave impact uh, discussion. I mean, depending on where you switch on your the, the sinusoidal voltage waveform, I'm not thinking, I'm already mentioned here, but I'm not thinking to discuss details. So, the, uh, these kind of things. Uh, another thing is the DC offset. I mean, the, that is nicely uh, demonstrated in PSK, especially in the current. Um, I mean, that is, you need the EMT software to do that. Mm. Yeah, again, I mean, these are the few examples where the, I mean, the, 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 uh, the EMT software is important. Uh, let me pick out any of the other uh, points to, uh, the other important point is, the, as I said earlier, that uh, because of, yeah, you are getting very detailed information through the PSCAD simulations. You have to run the PSCAD at a very small time scale. But it has to do so many calculations uh, per cycle, in, in other words. So when you decide in the time step, what, which kind of time step I should use, I think that's a question for many of the PSCAD users. Uh, the one I could say, I mean, is, is there a theoretical approaches? I mean, okay. Figure out where, what kind of frequency you are looking at, right? Uh, the uh, depending on the lighting switch study, switching study, TRE, or anything. So if you roughly know which kind of frequency you're expecting, um, then basically use ten times smaller time span. You should use for the simulation purpose. This is like a generic, generic rule, right? But honestly, nowadays. To the experienced people know what kind of time step you should use depending on the study rather than looking at these kind of approaches and uh, there are some brute force method too i mean they figure out what is the best uh, time step to be used in psk simulations but honestly nowadays people more just like use with the experience you're talking about uh, for example if you are somebody are switching studies what kind of time step is suitable depending on the line length, anything between 20 to 50 microseconds. Whereas if somebody asked me what should be the lightning, I would say use one or two microseconds. Whereas for uh, the TRE study, um, again, maybe uh, lightning study maybe even less, like a 0.1 microsecond or something. TRE study maybe one or two microseconds. So the people use a lot of experience uh, with this performing simulations to derive time step may not be the best way, I would say. But again, I mean, the you can also do, I mean, the, some kind of calculation and derive the uh, time step you should use. Uh, for example, uh, if you're talking about, again, uh, switching study, I would say the highest could be the uh, 10 kilohertz or uh, and you're doing lightning, maybe 100 kilohertz range, then pick it out what should be time step. Like that, I mean, the, that is the, uh, I mean, the best and easiest way with the UCB experience. Uh, again, I mean, the, there are some, things, some stuff for repeating here. Uh, I don't know, go back again. Uh, yeah, that should be, I mean, the, uh, uh, mostly, uh, mm -hmm. uh, high frequency transient, uh, events that you submitted to the PSCAT, but, uh, I have to pull another presentation to discuss about why the importance of the renewable integration, but rather than I'm pulling that, uh, so yes, we are running to the time too. Um, basically, nowadays, the important thing is the, uh, as long as PS can derive the, uh, the finite sinusoidal waveforms, right? So, the once come to the uh, 
the green PV or renewables, they use heavily what is called PLN uh, space uh, lock loop, sorry, it's loop lock, uh, how you call it, PLN anyways. The, uh, uh, so PLN need to recognize the uh, value sinus waveform crossing and, and uh, where the, the zero crossing are to identify where the system voltage is, right? So what is happening in in uh, the EMT, as long as it is deriving the sinusoidal waveform, the PLL can look at the sinusoidal waveform and recognize where the zero crossing, as well as once come to the other non-EMT software, you have only RMS voltage like that. So the, you cannot have a PLL as uh, <clears throat> you use in the real life OEMT software. They have a something PLL just to mimic the uh, time delays engaged with this process, right? It's just mimicking the effect of the PLL, but not the actual uh, tracking the voltage and recognizing where the current zeros. And especially now, what happened with especially uh, with the low short circuit level area, there are two things happening. This, uh, you know, that I mean, this some event happens, uh, the, some contingency happens, the, the phase shift with, with any event is very large, right? The, the, the sinusoid waveform shift quickly. Sometimes the PLL are not good enough to identify this kind of phase shift, they may act weirdly, right? And also, not necessarily in the, uh, the weak grids, uh, the weak low short circuit area, these waveforms are distorted heavily, I mean, because of the low damping, all right? So therefore, I mean, there can be multiple zero crossings uh, like that. So if some event happens, the, the, the new waveform has a large phase shift as well as very dis distorted waveforms, the PLL are having a real hard time to recognize the, the waveform, right? This is a real issue. People want to see that range extend the fails. So that's why the, the main application of PSK comes into the picture where you capture this kind of, I mean, the distortion as well as phase shift in the sinusoidal waveform correctly in PSK. Then somebody can see through their PLL models whether the PL can recognize it or how the, the control fails. So, that they are this become very handy for uh, renewable education nowadays, uh, especially in low short circuit areas where the uh, people want to investigate how their inverter controls, how their inverter control should be uh, tuned, whether they, they, you have to freeze the frequency for a while or should you rely on your PLL, we have to block the PLL. These kind of decisions can be made uh, based on the studies. Uh, so therefore, I mean the that is the uh, new, I would say, it's not a new application, but we have a booming application of the PSK nowadays, especially related to renewables. I think with that, uh, I conclude my presentation on um, the main applications of PSK, why it's important. Hopefully, I think I give you some idea compared with the other software, why I'm not necessarily saying PSK, why EMT software is important in power system nowadays. Uh, related to the two things, again, I, if I summarize, one is the high frequency transient. We want to capture any of these studies and the effects of them. You have to use EMT software. On the other hand, especially once come to the renewable, um, due to the, I mean, the behavior of the, the, the unique characteristic of the renewables where you have a PLL uh, to capture the, uh, the science of the waveform of the power system. Uh, and because only EMT software provide that science of the waveform coming from the system with a nice kind of soil waveform or like a distorted waveform, whatever the waveforms coming from the system, that's the reality. So uh, the people, uh, I mean, the, the, the model can visualize those things. So the simulations and that's where the uh, PSCAD, uh, the emerging market or the emerging application is. So with that, I think um, I uh, 
took the presentation here. Uh, we have uh, roughly around uh, one hour and 15 minutes. Uh, hopefully, uh, some of my colleagues can demonstrate to you uh, the PSCAD software. Before I'm going to that section, I saw that there's a couple of questions quickly. I will try to answer them. Uh, there's one question whether they mean to use, I think, some trade files or I'm thinking any other graphical um i mean the uh, graphical uh, means to see the waveforms or the, the better built-in uh, graph in psked is there any difference or is there any advantage is that i'm not thinking any of them uh only thing is if you're at this on application if you're tuning something in psked for example it's a heavily but one part of my job is tuning the inverters like that i prefer to use psked tuning because you change some small parameter and tune it something and you run the simulation you immediately see the waveform whereas the if i want to plot some other means i mean i have to go to another uh software and put it and see it but uh if you don't have that kind of requirement you want to run bulk simulations and then you want to analyze the results separately i mean there's no harm you go to any other plotting tool rather than looking at the uh the ps can inbuilt uh plotting so the uh the in, in, in this plotting is very handy when, when you are tuning something, especially related to the, uh, the inverter controls or something. Uh, the other question is, uh, immediately. I think there's only one question that was the answer somebody has provided. Yeah. So, any, if you have any key question, I mean, I'm not thinking there are so many people participating in this uh, webinar. I'm not thinking uh, there should be open session that you can ask questions. Uh, it will take a longer time. If you have anything, I mean, you can type here in the chat. Um, that's the best way to the, uh, yeah, the answer the question. So, uh, bring the PS card uh, just to show you the PS card and uh, probably after that. Um, my colleague Yumu will demonstrate you here to develop a small case and, and run it. Uh, some of you may have PSCAD already. I mean, you know, the, there may be different version. Don't worry about that. But this is what is when you open PSCAD. The middle area is the where you normally work on and you develop your circuit uh, and and you put your plots and everything. So the uh, when you create your case or when you open a case file by someone you see that the case list here you can open multiple cases i will multiple projects in other words PSCAD. so then you see your own cases you open cases and everything here as a list i don't have any case that's why you see here there's nothing uh, new uh, but when you open a case or create a new case it will see them with the name here right So when you create or when you open a case, you see here, I mean, you click on that, you see here your case, or if it's a new case, you see an empty page here. Now you can develop your circuit, all right? How you develop your circuit, there's something called master library here. If you double click on that, in case you put master library, you see there's a bunch of components you can use uh, for your I mean, circuit building process. Uh, they are categorized based on, for example, passive element, basic to RLC element, then you see sources, and here you see breakers, ports, uh, and some here transformers, machines, like that. So the, those all folders, folders are categorized. Um, and then the, you, you, if you click this, double click this arrow here, the master line, you can go inside and you see many many uh, other components in the same category so if you're inside here it's coming up it's very easy make sure you're in the home button press the home tab and up button and then you come to uh, the main page right that's how you navigate through the master library you go to any of these folders press up you can come up right uh, then you go uh, maybe another folder how to get any of these components it's easy just copy I and mean, if you need something for example breaker you just select it right click copy 
four control C, as you see here, the uh, short version, and then you will have a case here um, in a minute, I mean, in a moment, so I mean, you will create this kind of model, you will see that you come to your case and then right click and paste or control V, in other words. All right. So that's how you bring your components. I mean, you can bring as many as components to your work area and then you link them using um, that you pulled uh, a piece of wire. Um, uh, you will demonstrate you how to do that. Um, when you uh, uh, develop the circuit and probably you do some measurements, right, either voltage or current, active power, reactive power, what you want to do, you put some meters. Um, so, and then you do some plotting. So, the, other than this master library, uh, it's, it's very difficult thing to go and come and back. There was some people component tab up there where you have the very frequent use components. Right. So, actually, then just here the case is just click any of these components and then come to your work area. You get the component. You don't want to do copy paste operation here. Rather, you click any of these frequent use components. You see that there is just inductors and bus components and multimeter, some meters, multimeter and meters, both meters, kind of thing. You just click them once and come to your work area, and you will get them. All right. I'm just explaining these kind of things for people who are not much familiar with the software. Okay, with that, I stop here. Um, we may have a 10 minute break. It's my time is uh, the 152 here. I mean, you can calculate your time, whatever that we, we meet after 10 minutes in my time, like uh, two minutes past two. All right. After that, I mean, the, the Yumbo will take. Um, a case like this and create a new case and step by step go with you and demonstrate you how to develop that and get some plots and some simulations. If you're having PS scale, I really encourage you to with him and 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 uh, see how it's doing, whether you are getting the same results, you are, can you follow the same step? If you don't have the PS scale, don't worry, just observe what's doing, what's happening, and if you really understand something through that. And in between, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put in the uh, the chat area. Okay, with that, I stop and, and we meet in, in roughly 10 minutes time. Hi there, I, I hope you guys are back from the, uh, the break. Uh, I won't take, I, I take a couple of minutes to answer a few questions there. After that, you will take over, one of my colleagues uh, will take over and demonstrate your software. Give me, uh, Couple of minutes to answer a few few important questions made by uh, some of you. Uh, the the one question is on uh, 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 the the time step uh, issues with the DLL. When you are having a DLL, you may have different time steps. The one one thing, as you suggested, will be the uh, you make the uh, your simulation time step the same as whatever the DLL enforce. Or if you're having many DLLs uh, with the different time steps in PS can now provide what you called uh, the PNI or parallel network interface, you can break the same case into different different small cases where the small cases can run with an independent time step, uh, but still they are linked together. So we call it PNI. Uh, it's a very common thing nowadays. We use in a large uh, models where you have multiple uh, wind and PV uh, plants where they have their own time step to run, but you can link them with the main uh, transmission system with uh, uh, a transmission line, but they can run their own way. So that is called, we call it PNI. If you need a little bit more information on that, probably, I mean, you can go to the knowledge base in PSK uh, website and figure it out if you cannot, uh, uh, I mean, they please write to PS. Can we may have some some examples too? So that's the way. I mean, the nowadays we facilitate to run um, 
the the DLS or in other words different uh, wind and PV or battery or whatever the modules having different time steps they can run together. Uh, the other question is the uh, whether the uh, give me a second can the model power line power line carrier signals in PS cat. Probably I'm thinking I'm not familiar with much about what is the power line carrier signal. Probably the I mean communication signals you are talking about. Yes, as long as I'm in the uh, whatever signal you want to send from one end, you can receive from the other end. I mean I'm thinking this is a little bit high frequency communication uh, uh, communication. Uh, I mean data you are thinking about. If that's the case, yes, you can you can show that. I mean, you, you, sorry, uh, you can, uh, I mean, send from one end and receive from the other end. There was a question, I'm not sure about that. What about the load flow and short circuit studies? I'm thinking the question, original question should be whether they can form in PSCAD. Uh, if somebody asks, I mean, you know, PSCAD is not the, the ideal software to perform a load flow or uh, even for the short circuit studies we rely on uh, some other softwares um, and we, we normally input those information into PSCAD to get a nice uh, match in, in, in PSCAD cases. Uh, uh, for switching flashover, I think it's safe for me switching flashover studies I'm assuming you're asking about uh, the, uh, the plot what plot step can we use in simulations? I recommend I mean use as a simulation time step because you want to anyways running a, a simulation in a, a small time step and plotting it a, a larger time step. You may lose the uh, some of the plotting. I mean the information in the waveform you see. If you want to really see the a nice waveform, you can use the uh, the plotting time step and the simulation time step to be same. Uh, generally, I recommend something around uh, the the highest you should uh, use 50 microsecond but um, it, uh, it's a uh, good for very large long uh, I mean 100 or 200 kilometer long lines but if it's in shorter you can you should reduce I mean the, anything 20 to 10 20 to 50 microsecond range depending on the length uh, would be fine uh, there was a broad question why PLL using renewable that's a, that may take hours to explain why but uh, honestly PLL Renewables need to identify to inject uh, the, the certain amount of active and reactive power themselves. They want to identify where the system voltage is, right? Otherwise, it doesn't know because uh, the whatever the the waveform voltage waveform generated by the inverter should be relative to the system voltage, right? Because the the angle between those two will define how much power flow to the system, right? You know that one point to another point, the power flow depends on the the voltage angle, uh, and the reactive power is dominantly on the magnitude of the voltage, right? So the based on that, to if somebody asks any renewable to inject this much P and this much Q, it should know what is the the system voltage, where is the system voltage, because relative to that, you have to make a delta angle and extra magnitude. To in the waveform to provide the uh, required active and reactive power. So that's why we want to recognize what should be the system, exact system voltage waveform pattern. To identify use that, we use something called PLL. Uh, that is the special uh, equipment we use to identify exactly the system voltage pattern. Hopefully, I mean, within the short period, I answered this question. With that, I leave. Um, uh, this uh, with with Yumbo to demonstrate you uh, uh, some of the I mean the example case. Yumbo, you can go ahead. Okay, thanks, Vladimir. Let me share my screen. Okay, uh, please let me know if you can see my screen. Okay, so um, I hope you guys have all installed the PSCAD and up and make sure everything is running okay. Uh, so uh, today I will be demonstrating a PSCAD example on how to do a simple, very simple 
transformer energization study. Um, so first of all, um, in this example, I'm going to start from scratch and, and uh, uh, just give you a quick introduction on PSCAT as well. Uh, so um, if you haven't got the PSCAT open, please uh, make sure you have PSCAT open. And uh, uh, right now I haven't got anything open and I have just the uh, master library basically showing you all the components that can be used in a particular PSCAT study. And the first thing I need to do um, for the study is go to file. Uh, in this case, we want to create a new PSCAT case. So go to file. Again, I'm just repeating, go to file, click new. And once you click new, uh, in this case, we want to create a new case. Uh, so uh, for this example, I would suggest you to uh, create maybe a folder on your desktop and uh, uh, save this case to your um, the, to, to the folder on your desktop. But in this case, I'm just going to quickly copy paste the link I have created and make sure it is saved the case in this folder. And once you have this case set up, set it up, you can also um, specify a name. So you, uh, in this case, I'm just going to leave it as a default name, new case. And once that is done, you can just click create to create a new case. Okay, so once a new case is being created, uh, you will see a blank canvas like this. So in, in PSCAD, when we talk about new case, it's basically, uh, as I mentioned before, you can um, copy and paste anything in the master library, as I'm showing here, to your new case. So in this case, I will be um, copy a couple of co components into this. Um, blank canvas. So just give you guys an overview of what we'll be uh, studying. So um, basically we will be having <coughs> a system equivalent source, which has its voltage to be 230 and uh, with the system equivalent impedance define both in, both in positive sequence as well as zero sequence. And this source is then gonna connect to a current meter, which monitor the current. And then connect to a bus. So this bus would be 230 kV bus. And once the, that connection is completed, um, then we will be connecting another voltmeter, which is measuring the voltage at this bus. And to energize the transformer, then we will need to connect a breaker, which is uh, do the switching. And on the other side of the breaker, we need uh, our main player, the transformer. So uh, we will be um, copy and paste each and every component from the master library and to develop a circuit like this. So start from the beginning, uh, we need to grab the sources. So to, to find the source in the master library, you can find the source um, here. So if you zoom in, you will be able to see more on sources. <clears throat> and if you go inside more on sources, copy and copy this component. You can copy it by box selected and press Ctrl and C on your keyboard. So I'm just going to box select it plus control C and then go back to my case and paste this on my canvas. So once
you can again box select it and rotate it. So to rotate it, you can just press R on your keyboard. So in this case, if I box select it and press R, it will rotate this component in a clockwise direction. So in this case, we want this component to be facing down as it was showing in the schematic here. And once that is done, the next component we want to connect is the current source. So uh, you can find the current source again in our uh, master library, but in this case, I'm just going to directly go to the component ribbon up here. So if we the current source is located right here as I'm circling with uh, blue pen. So you can just simply click on this current source and move your mouse to the canvas. And again, you can click on it and press R on your keyboard. You can rotate to the orientation you would like. And the next step uh, would uh, be connecting this current source to the sources or to the voltage source we just created. So to do that, uh, again, on your keyboard, press Control and W. This will invoke the wire mode. So to do wire mode, you can, again, uh, in this case, right click. It will create a wire like this, as you can see. And once you see this wire, we want to connect this wire to the other other terminal of the uh, of the current meter. And right click, and this will create a wire that connects the voltage source to the current meter. So just to repeat, to create a wire, um, if I start from the beginning, press Ctrl and W, it will give you uh, this wire mode. As you can see, the mouse becomes a pen. To create a wire, press left, click on your mouse, Extend your mouth to the location you like and right click. So once this wire is created, you can actually create you can actually further rotate this wire by dragging on one of the terminals, like I'm doing like this. And you can delay the wire by selecting this wire and press delay on your keyboard. Okay, so that's how you use the wire to connect uh, this current source we just created with the voltage source. And, sorry, the, the, the current meter and the voltage source. Now, uh, the next step, if we want to create uh, this uh, uh, 230 kV bus, so we can uh, again use a wire as a as a representation of the bus. So simply uh, press Ctrl and W, left click, drag it, right click. Uh, so just in case you don't know how to uh, exit uh, the wire mode, you can again just uh, press Ctrl and W. That will help you exit the control uh, the, the exit the wire mode. That just also going to drag this bus to create some space and then simply uh, go to the wire mode by press Ctrl and W and connect this amp meter to the bus we just created. Okay, once this step is complete, the other thing we want to do is to add this voltmeter, which can help us monitoring the 
to 30 kV bus voltage. So to find the voltmeter, you can simply, uh, again, go to the components, as you can see at the top, and select this component I'm circling with the blue marker. You can simply click on this component and place it on our canvas. So once this step complete, the next thing we want to add is a breaker. So the, the function of the, this breaker is uh, so that we can have this transformer initially disconnected and then have it connected during the simulation and simulates uh, transformer energization. So to find the breaker, you can go to a master library, which I'm... So if you are still in the page of uh, uh, of the sources, you can, in this case, double click uh, quickly on your master library. This will, again, bring you up to the most top page. And you can find the breaker in this window. Um, as my mouse is circling. And I want you to copy and paste this breaker, as well as the breaker control. So we can do it twice. So now I'm just gonna box select this breaker, copy, just simply control C on your keyboard, go to a new case, paste the breaker, and again, rotate the breaker by press R on your keyboard to the correct location. And then I can go back to the master library. Again, under breaker and false category, box select this breaker control logic, box select this whole thing, control C, copy this on using your keyboard, and then move to your new case and paste it. So this time the breaker logic is basically the logic that is gonna control this breaker. You can basically place this component everywhere on your canvas as long as the name of a breaker and the name of this signal type is the same, this breaker control logic is gonna control the status, either open or break of this breaker. So once this is, this is completed, you can again use your wire by press Ctrl and W, left click on one terminal, right click on the other terminal to connect them. Just give you guys a minute or two to make sure you have got to this step. So just to, again, reiterate, you can find the sources. in the source section of the master library, <coughs> which is the source we want to have. As for the, uh, the meters, the current meter, as well as the voltage meter, you can find it directly under the component tab. You can get the current meter at the top and the voltage meter at the bottom. and you will need to use the wiring to connect all of these components together, just uh, as I'm showing in this schematic. And last but not least, the breaker. You need to find the breaker again from the master library under the breaker and false. And you need to copy not only the breaker, 
also, but also the breaker control logic. Okay, so once you have this step completed, uh, now the, the last item we want to add is uh, this transformer. So very similar to the sources, as well as the breaker, you can find the transformer in our master library as well. So again, if you double click on your master library, it will bring you to the most front page of your master library. And uh, you can just find the uh, transformer section on your on the second row and copy this to a new transformer by press Ctrl C on your keyboard. Move to a new case. And paste to a new case. And again you can rotate this transformer to the correct location. So in this case we want the one in one connects to our breaker and one and two which is the delta side to be open and then you can use a wire again to connect the terminal of this breaker to the terminal of the transformer And the next thing is we want to ground the delta, which means we want to, again, use a, a grounding component as I'm circling here on the top left corner. I want you to select this by left click click and place it to your canvas. And again, you can rotate it by pressing R on your keyboard and connect the Y to the ground. One other thing that is fairly unique to PSCAD is uh, the delta side is, uh, is basically uh, an open terminal, which it means that uh, it doesn't really have a ground reference. So to avoid numerical issues, we want to add a large impedance on the open side to simulate the open end. So to simulate the open end, we want to add a large impedance. So in this case, I'm just gonna add a large resistor. So again, you can find the resistor and I'm circling at the top left corner. You can again select this resistor and drag it to your canvas. And again, you can rotate this resistor. So uh, as I mentioned before, we want this to be high impedance. So we want to make it to uh, be a very large value. So I'm just gonna put 1E6. Press OK. So PSCAT does uh, have this default unit for the resistor to be ohm. So I don't need to add um, ohm. The PSCAT will know this is uh, 1E6, one mega ohm. And again, we can just copy this ground and connect it to the ground to the other end of this resistor and then connect them all together with wires and in case you you have this question, it doesn't like you don't really need a wire to connect them. Uh, you can just directly put the terminals of each component right on top of each other. Uh, but the wires just uh, create some space and makes things look neat. Okay, so once this step is completed, you have introduced your transformer and as well as uh, uh, put a large resistor on the open dot end. The next thing we want to do is to make sure we have all the correct parameters 
for the sources for the breaker control logic as well as the transformer. So for the sources, I'm just gonna quickly grab a, a sticky note so you can again find a sticky note, find a sticky, sticky note under the component. So the sticky note is just like a comment uh, section in programming. It doesn't really affect your case. It's just for uh, reminder purposes. Uh, you can change the font and as well as the color. So in this case, I'm just gonna use some bright color to signify what kind of parameters we want for the sources. So for the source, we want the voltage to be 130 kV. with the an angle of zero degree. And as for the impedance, we want the impedance, uh, the potent sequence to be 10 ohm at 88 degree. and zero sequence to be seven ohm, seven ohms at 82 degree. Again, for your simulation, you don't need this um, comments if you don't want to, it doesn't really affect simulation. This is just to remind you what kind of parameters we need for the sources. So to put these parameters into the source, you can double click on your source. And on the configuration, we want this to be impedance. So the user can enter neither the RRL value, which is uh, the physical value, or if you do already know the impedance uh, in terms of ohms and angle, uh, you can select the impedance. Okay, just in case you didn't follow me, uh, you can double click on this component to invoke the parameter section of this parameter uh, of this component. And under configuration, we want the impedance data format to be impedance. And under internal impedance, which is the second on the drop down window, we want the positive sequence to be 10. With the angle of 88. And the zero sequence to be seven. With the angle of 82. and you can leave every other parameters as default. So once you have entered the impedance data, now we can move on to the source control. So on the source control, if you click on the source control, we want the voltage to be 230 and angle to be zero. So these are already uh, R as a default value, so you don't need to change these. Um, parameters. So just to uh, quick, quickly reiterate what we changed so far on the configuration, we want the impedance data format to be impedance, which is different from the default value of RRL values. We want this to be impedance. Under internal impedance, we want to put positive sequence impedance and the angle, as well as the zero sequence impedance and the angle. and you can leave everything else as default and you can click OK to commit these values. You can also double click, double click again, go back to the, uh, the parameter section just to double check you, these values indeed being committed. So 1088 
for pulsing sequence, 0, 82 for zero sequence. That's good. So that's sources. Uh, the next thing we want to uh, set the parameter is, say, the transformer. So as for the transformer, I'm just going to, again, copy and paste a very similar sticky note here. So for the transformer, uh, the transformer is modeled uh, in, most of, uh, most of software, in most of the software, PSCAD included, uh, the, the series path as well as a parallel path. So for the series path, uh, we have our leakage impedance, which is our X, to be 0 0.1 per unit. And the R, which is our copper loss, to be 0 0.003 per unit. And these will be uh, based on a transformer that is 100 MVA of 230 kV to 33kV. And as for the parallel path, so the parallel path, we will be modeling it as a, a saturation as well. Um, but as just for the linear region, we have our no load loss, G to be 0 0.005 per unit, and the magnetizing current to be 1%. And uh, just uh, for your information, for nodal loss, we sometimes also call it the eddy current loss. To enter these values into PSCAD, you can just again double click on this transformer. It will invoke a, a parameter setting window. And under configuration, uh, most of these parameters are uh, a default. For example, uh, uh, for MBA, we can keep using 100, and we can keep the vector group as a default. Uh, the positive sequence is already at the point one, so we don't need to change this one as well. For ID current loss, for ID current losses, we want to make this to be 0 0.005 per unit. And the copper loss is 0 0.003. So in this case, uh, PSCAD does give you the option to uh, simulate the saturation or or not. Um, but in this case, since we're studying transformer energization, so we have to um, simulate the saturation, which is a linear, nonlinear part uh, of the trans transformer core. So typically for TSCAD, uh, just to keep in mind, if we want to simulate saturation, we want the ideal transformer model to be yes. And that's all three things you need to change for, uh, for the configuration page. The rest you can leave as default. And uh, now for the winding voltages. Uh, so for winding one, we want it to be 230, which is uh, the default value. But winding two, we want to make it 33 kV to simulate the 230 to 33 kV transformer. And as for the saturation, um, we want to enable the saturation. So enable saturation to be yes. Uh, all of the saturation parameters you can leave as a default, except the magnetizing current, which is 1% in our case. Just a quick uh, overview of what we have changed. Uh, for, on the configuration section, we want our ideal transformer model to be yes. This is especially for if we want to model saturation. And on the ID current losses, we want it to be 0 0.005, copper loss to be 0 0.003. Under winding voltages, we want the winding two to be 33 kV. And last but not least, the saturation. We want the saturation to be enabled, so this selection to be yes. And the magnetizing current to be 1%.
And once you have this information entered into your model, you can again click OK to commit these values. And again, I'm just going to reopen this parameters just to double check these values are indeed being committed. Okay. So once this is completed, we want to set uh, our breaker logic. So for our bridge brick logic, we want the breaker to be open initially. And at 0 0.5 second, closes. So since there will only be one operation happening from open to close, we want the number of operation to be one. The initial state, we want it to be open. And the time of first breaker operation to be 0 0.5. So we want the, the number of breaker operation to be one. The initial state to be open. And we would want the breaker to close to energize the transformer at 0 0.1, at 0 0.5 second. You can click OK. Okay, so once this is completed, uh, you can um, just run a simulation. So right now we don't have anything plotted. We just want to run the simulation, make sure there's no any errors. Um, so just in case, if your case does have uh, some errors. So right now, uh, in, in my case, as you can see, uh, down below the EMTDC run completed, which means there's no error and everything runs uh, as planned. Um, but I'm just going to quickly create an, an error. Just in case, if you do have error in your case, you can use this method to debug. So right now, I'm just going to create an error in my case and run this case again. And as, uh, as you can see, uh, if I just rerun the case, uh, the PSCAD gave me a window saying the project was unsuccessful when building. So there's some errors when building this project, and then you can review the build message for more detail. Uh, so to view the build message, so on the uh, left-hand side corner, uh, you will be able to see uh, your build messages like this. And typically, if you have errors, uh, PSCAD will give you this uh, uh, red cautious button and uh, uh, shows you what kind of error your cases have it. And you can even click on this hyperlink, which is this number. If you click on this, PSCAD will highlight which, which component is uh, giving you trouble. So in this case, since this breaker is expecting someone uh, to control, control it, so it, it is ex expecting a control logic. Um, since I have uh, intentionally uh, put this name to be to a wrong name, uh, that's why we're having this error. So if I just fix it, I simply change the name back of the breaker control logic. If we run the case, this error should, should go away. So in your case, you might have different uh, errors. Uh, so um, to debug any case, if you run a simulation, uh, you will see uh, some errors in your build messages. And if you click on any of the, uh, the hyperlink, it will show you where the, uh, the errors in your case. OK, so uh, now if your case is running fine without any error, um, we will be um, plotting these signals to see what our simulation result looks like. So to plot these signals, you can again go to the component tab at the top. We'll be using <laughs> signal as well as the output channel. So we'll be using these two components. So we'll be using this, uh, the data, data tab signal to extract 
the information being measured by this amp meter as well as this voltmeter. So to extract what you need to do is just to make sure the name is corresponding to both the amp meter and the voltmeter. So in, in in this case, my the name of my amp meter is uh, IA on the line one and EA on the line one. So as, what I need to do is just make sure I have these two names to be the same and corresponding to the my amp meter as well as the voltmeter. And uh, uh, the next thing we want to do is the auto channel. So again, if we go to the component, select this auto channel. You can just simply click on copy paste to create another one. And in this case, to connect the auto channel, you can again using our wire as I showed you to how to connect the uh, electrical component. For actually other component, you can also use a wire to connect them. And once you have made the connection, uh, you can right click on output channel. Go to graphs, meters, and control, and add overlay graph with signal. Okay, so I have done this with uh, current. You can also do it with voltage. So I'm just going to repeat this process. Uh, you right click on your plotting channel, go to graphs, meters, and control and add overlay graph with signal. And you can place the, uh, the plotting your canvas and click run. Uh, so one thing uh, we need to change is also the duration of the run. So for any For any uh, default PSCAT new cases, uh, the duration of the run is default at 0.5, but in this case, we want it to be five seconds. So uh, you can change this under project and make sure the duration of one is five seconds. And once you have that as five seconds, you can again go to home and press run to execute the simulation. So as you can see on my screen, uh, this sim simulation is successful. And uh, you can find uh, the inrush current as well as the voltage monitored as a bus. Uh, so to zoom in uh, the diagram, uh, or to zoom in any diagram, you can just box select it using your mouse. To zoom out, uh, you can simply press R on your keyboard. So if I click on any anywhere in the plot, click on it, uh, left click and press R, it will zoom out the plots. Similar to the voltage, so if I zoom in around the time we energize the transformer, there is some slight distortions. It's not, this is strong grid, so there's not much distortions. But again, you can just box select it and to zoom in to any voltage measurement. And if you want to zoom out, press R on your keyboard, it will zoom out completely. So if you're interested in um, transforming energi energization, uh, you can also do some additional uh, tests or play around by yourself where you can actually switch at the different times. So the default time is at point, point, point 0.5. You can actually 
uh, switch at slightly different times to see what the waveform looks like. This, this will be uh, up to you. You can um, do some other investigation. So right now I'm just uh, uh, switch a time to like a quarter of a cycle. Um, and then we got a very different results from what we did before. And this would uh, conclude our example of um, how to perform a very simple uh, transformer energization study. Uh, I think for the last uh, maybe 10 minutes, uh, we'll have another uh, question and answer session. Uh, so Lalin, um, would you be able to take over and answer any questions if they have? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, Yimbo. Uh, yeah, with that, I mean, the, uh, we conclude the uh, uh, presentation today itself. So we'll be back tomorrow. But in between, if you have any question or anything, uh, I think you can, uh, you can ask now. Uh, Uh, Christian, are you all there or? Yeah, I'm still here. Um, can you see the questions right now, Lillian? Uh Still, um, I see through a small window. I don't know how to expand it. Uh, yeah, do you see new questions coming in or? Um, our latest question was at uh, 50 minutes or 10 minutes um, before the hour. So uh, we have two questions that just have not been answered um, by Zoe. Uh, the first answer question was, um, why option ideal transformer is set to yes? Uh, okay, yeah. Um, so uh, I, I could try to answer this question, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's for your case you can answer, yeah. Okay. Um, so for uh, for this question on ideal transformer model, so uh, typically um, PSCAD has uh, two different ways to model a transformer core. Um, so let, let me just quickly draw something here. Um, so PSCAD, uh, so basically if I just draw uh, the series path, which you have your leakage uh, reactants as well as the new copper loss, which is uh, which is the R. Uh, for any transformer, we, we're having core model, which is uh, uh, modeled by a resistor as well as the inductor. So if, if you have any voltage disturbances, um, the, the, the current flowing, uh, the car current flowing through the core would be a linear relationship. So I say if we have voltage and current, there will be a linear relationship because of where uh, so the one way PSCAD modeling uh, is by simply modeling a um, passive R or G and uh, and the inductor which is the mag magnetizing path. However PSCAD also have what they call the um, saturation model where it models the saturation by current injection. So the resulted core would not only be a linear path, it will also add it on top of the nonlinear path to simulate the saturation of the voltage and current. So when that selection, um, ideal transformer to be yes, uh, that just means PSCAD will not be having this path so we want that to be yes, is because uh, if we want to model saturation, the saturation itself will will model the linear path as well as the nonlinear, as well as the nonlinear path. So that, that begs the question: What would happen if we um, don't select the ideal transformer? Uh, 
So if we don't select the ideal transformer, if that, that selection is no, so we'll be not only have this path as, as well as the linear path. So we're basically modeling the linear path twice. And that would, would not be correct uh, when modeling transformers. I uh, hope that answers your question. Simply, you have to solve either both the places no or both the places yes. That, that's how, because those are the correct selections. So keep in mind that I mean, the, uh, because you cannot have both modeling. Therefore, I mean, the other one is asking ideal transformer. Ideal transformer means you don't have this linear path uh, you moved on first. So it, the asking is, I mean, a little bit awkward way, but uh, honestly, what you have to, if you read carefully, you will understand that either both the places should be yes or both the places should be no. So that those are the, I mean, the credible two operations through this transformer. Christian, you see any other question? Uh, sorry, I mean, I'm still struggling to... Yeah, there, no. there's been a few questions just coming in here, uh, just kind of going with the order that they come in. Uh, so the next question was uh, just from uh, Pablo. He said, I got a dimension mismatch error message in the transformer. How can I fix that? So can you repeat again? I, I didn't. Yeah. Um, so he just mentioned that he got a dimension mismatch error message in the transformer, and he was wondering how that can be fixed. Okay, dimension mismatch comes basically to uh, because three phase and the single phase thing. So you know, if we can uh, go to master library, you can explain the two different vehicles. You see that uh, the left one and the right one. If you see that the right one is very thick, uh, the line in the PS cat, if you anyway it's a thicker line, it's a three phase. Uh, if it is thinner line, uh, representation as you see the left side break, the red one, yeah, single phase, right. There is a situation you use single phase breaker, the three phase system. So that's where you get the dimension based. Right? So this can be any of the components, whether you have used the single phase representation model rather than the three phase representation. So any other open question? Um, just a quick one from uh, the next one is just where can I find the errors? Uh, but I, if okay, you want to just um, go back. Yeah, uh, so the, the errors messages can be found uh, um, on the build messages. Uh, so it's normally located at the uh, top, uh, sorry, the bottom left corner. Uh, so let me just quickly create an error in my case by just simply change the breaker to be breaker one of the control logic and run the case. Uh, as you can see, once I just run the case by pressing the run button, um, there is uh, error messages like this uh, showing up. And uh, so it's on the build message. Just in case if you don't have this build message um, displayed in your case, uh, you can find them under view at the top and under panes. Just make sure you have uh, this, this build message to be selected. So again, if you go to view at the top here, and then go to panes, and under panes, click build messages. So once you have this selected, for any simulation errors, you should be able to find here. And sometimes if you don't have uh, like, these ones also click as well. Uh, so right now I just unclick all of them, but if I click error, it only shows you the error. If I only have messages, I only have messages. Uh, if I click all three of them, I will get both error warning and messages. And once you do see messages in your case, you can then click on the ID. It will show you where, uh, where it went wrong in your case. I hope this answers your question. I think 
that that's all right, Christian. The questions. Uh, there are some more questions. I, I do see that uh, we are just past our time at the moment. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five, of them. I mean, we can be here for an answer for another five minutes. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. So I can go with the next question, which is um, harm uh, by Fabian. It's a harm number where phase is same as fundamental on the source. How does the value impact the simulation? Uh, so this number is uh, typically a default as two. Uh, you can read about it. Uh, there is a, a particular uh, article on PSCAT uh, knowledge base, just uh, specifically how to how to derive this um, harmonic phase, uh, same as fundamental. Um, so basically, for the sources, we're having um, R uh, in parallel with another R and L elements. So basically, we're having three variables. Um, uh, so if we only have a positive sequence impedance as well as the angle, that's basically only give two variables uh, to define uh, these three. So we will need another one. So we, we have uh, uh, another one where uh, it calculates a harmonic number where the phase is the same as fundamental. So we typically have two. Uh, so that when you have the three, um, Variables it defines the both um, uh, the source impedance of the R in parallel with the RL, and I will uh, link the um, resources online for you to uh, have a further read. Thank you, Yumbo. Uh, just a following question from Alex is. Where can you put the line data? Line length, impedance, capacitance, etc. Oh, sorry, the line, or like a transmission line? Uh, it just states the line data. Um, okay, uh, we haven't uh, added a transmission line in this case. Yeah, but, um, yeah but no, we can we can talk this tomorrow. Uh, in other cases, we will demonstrate that. Okay, yeah, so we'll demonstrate this tomorrow. Okay, um, question about uh, what type of solutions available for transformer ener ener energization studies? Let me know if you need me to repeat that. Um, the solutions, um, mm -hmm. like simulation solutions or um, mitigation solutions. Sorry, uh, you, you can you repeat the question? Probably I can answer. Yeah. What type of solutions available for transformer ener energization studies? Okay, yeah, there are a couple of um, solutions. One is the uh, the most common one is people use optimization um, resistor to uh, reduce. Uh, that's the one way. The other one is uh, the point on wave switching. Uh, normally, the uh, point on wave is very common. I would say very common, but uh, there's no option for very large transforms like 500 MBA. 600 MBA, like kind of very large transformers, energizing will be a huge issue. So uh, the people use um, point on wave. I mean, they are looking at the uh, 90 degree place where we have the minimum amount of inverse current, uh, and they energize there for each phase. Uh, that's uh, uh, and also some of the applications, very unique application, like your generator or the uh, uh, the black starting kind of situations. People ramp the voltage. With the transformer, for example, I mean a generator transformer already connected to generator, right? So the uh, the rather than energizing, but it is ramping the voltage that in a such a way that it doesn't throw a lot of um, uh, inverse current. This is done normally. The your transformer is uh, I mean compared to very larger than the uh, the generator close by generator or something. So this like kind of I mean I'm I'm just telling you different different approaches people use, but it depends on your your application uh, uh, depending on that you can you can choose 
any of these these uh, solution methods. Thank you, Owen. Um, there, I just want to just confirm how many more there are. Uh, there's not that many more. There's only four more questions. So um, uh, one person uh, just stated that um, he could, oh, he has already left the webinar. So I will skip that one. Um, so um, Jesus says, does the computation time vary much if saturation is considered? So, sorry again. Yeah. Uh, does the computation time varies much if saturation is considered? Um, oh, computation time. Yes, that can be. I thought a simulation time step. Now, I mean, if you talk about total computational time, yes, because the uh, if you have any nonlinear Riemann time in the, uh, uh, I mean, the put in in, in a, I mean, activity in PSCAD, it may use interpolation. This kind of Due to these kind of things, sometimes uh, uh, you may, I mean, whole total computational period can be elongated. Sometimes, depending on your simulation, it may not be visualized, but it may be visualized. I mean, it's a significant uh, delay, or you may not see, but honestly, uh, simulation may lead to have, because as long as it has to, now dealing with a lot of interpolation algorithms. Thank you. And just one last uh, question. On the plot, it is not showing the correct magnitude of voltage. For 230 kilovolts, the peak value should be 220 kilovolts, but it's showing less than 200 kilovolts. How is this? Uh, no, this is a phase peak value. So the uh, I'm not sure 230 divided by root 3 multiplied by root 2. So you have to figure it out what is the value. So that is what we're showing here. It should be the phase, PSCAD is showing three phases and phase peak value, right? Yeah. I think if it's not showing that value, there is some error, but uh, as long as your simulation is correct, so whatever the value, 230 divided by root 3 multiplied by root 2. So all the voltages you see phase peak value. To get it phase root divided by root 3 and peak value multiplied by root 2. Yeah. That's okay. all. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Just one last one. Just uh, asking if there's going to be any harmonic analysis models uh, in the next session. Um, no, we don't have any plan to talk about harmonic analysis. Uh, but if you are really interested or something, uh, best thing is to write to PSCAD su support at pscad.com. Probably we may share some examples depending on the particular study you're looking for. A little bit mention in detail what, what you're exactly looking for. One example, harmonic studies can be there are so many things people are doing. And that area, if you're looking for particular information, I mean, they please write to uh, support at pscat.com. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm just gonna uh, stop it here, just seeing that we're just 10 minutes past. Um, Daniel, I will see if we can just get your answer question after, but just to have a hard stop at least. Um, we will uh, resume tomorrow. Um, and we will also be sharing the uh, cases and everything for everybody tomorrow. I'll be sharing a link um, likely through the GoToWebinar uh, so that all of you guys can access the, the required documents. Um, if you don't have the um, PSCAD software, um, the reminders do have a join code attached to them where you can go into my center, download it, and you should be able to have access to our educational license uh, for tomorrow's session and also for an additional week after, so you can just play around with it. Uh, Lillian, did you have anything additional to say? No, no, I mean, uh, yeah, we will meet tomorrow uh, and there will be some cases um, that Christine will, will share with you for tomorrow uh, session. Perfect. Uh, in the meantime, if you do have any issues with uh, 
with setting up or anything, just please uh, email support at pscad.com, as mentioned, and uh, we can help you. Uh, sorry, Lillian, for interrupting you there. Um, but yeah, thank you for all for coming. Uh, thank you, uh, Lillian, Zoe, and Yongbo for, for all your hard work, and uh, we look forward to seeing you all tomorrow.